Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we're going to be talking about a basic warm-up format. Our basic warm-up format is fairly simple. It needs to have several things in it. We need to control our time so we know exactly how long it's going to take. If it's not a controlled format and you don't know how long it's going to take, then that's probably not a great warm-up. Everything that we do here and everything that I do in my job is time under control. We're always controlling the time so we know exactly how long everything should take. This is pretty basic, but I don't know, a lot of people tend not to do it this way. This version is very similar to a CrossFit version of a warm-up, but this is what I think is the most important stuff. What we have here is two rounds of something. Every minute on the minute, but it's not really an EMOM because we're going for the entire minute. So. We have four families of movements here, and those are gonna shift every day. This is not exactly the warm up, this is the warm up format. Shield and Gamma Cast. I consider Shield and Gamma Cast to be one of the most fundamental human aspects that you can work on, and you should work on it every day. You'll notice it's at the top of this workout format. These will be light Shield Cast or Gamma Cast because it is a warm up, which means it should be below 60% of what your working weight is. If you have a 10 and a 15 pound club, then it's probably a 10 pound club. If it's a mace, the same thing. It's probably a very, very light mace. You are doing either a shield cast or a gamma cast with one hand high. I always start with my left hand high because it's my non-dominant hand. And you would do it for an entire minute, which would give you about 30 reps, about. We get the blood flowing with an uber lightweight, then we do shoulder or neck mobility. Shoulder and neck are directly related to one another, so if I am doing top bottom figure eights, that is operating all of the muscles on the side of my neck anyway, and it's mobilizing my shoulder, shoulder neck. Third is spine or roll. I focus a lot on rolls because I've done a lot of martial arts and I did some circus stuff. And so we take our spine exercise and I like it to be a roll. Rolls are super useful in martial arts. They are also super useful in my main job, which is training for movies. Training for movies, people fall down all the time. That's how you know stuff happened. If you watch Marvel movies, you will see a lot of people falling down. All of those are based on a roll. Think about this as rolling like a ball from Pilates and then scaled up with 50 levels of variation all the way up until standing same side shoulder roll falls, which you would use for stunts. If it's in the warm up, we would like it to stay usually in the first 10 levels of spinal rock. So think about a spinal rock, a spinal rock shin box, rolling like a ball if you're familiar with Pilates. Basically the idea is to roll your spine back and forth across the ground so that you learn to pull your abs in and activate your core. If you roll and you thump, then you are not doing it right yet. There should be no thumbs. We call it being super ninja. That is the basis for tons of higher level athletic movements that you would need to know later on for the things that I do at least. And the fourth category is gonna be our hip mobility or our shin box series. We already have some videos on shin box series. It should be windshield wipers, shin box, shin box elbow, shin box arm thread into four count. That is five exercises I just gave you then you could do that it just as warm up all by itself. But right now, what I want you to do is think about all the versions of shield cast that you know, all the versions of shoulder and neck mobility that you know, all the versions of spinal rock that you know, and all the version of hip shin box that you know. Write them all down and then combine them in every way. You can end up with uh, probably at least 100 versions of this warm up very, very simply, very, very effectively. I'm not gonna tell you and demonstrate all of them in this video, we'll do that in future videos, but I want you to understand the idea of this right now. There are four exercises in this series. If you repeat it twice, it's exactly eight minutes on the clock. That's good. We like to have super time controlled things. In my job, I have to know exactly when somebody is going to be done with something. When they say five minutes in my job, they mean five minutes. They don't mean five minutes and 55 seconds, they mean five minutes. So I have to be able to predict where every section of training will end up time-wise. And then on the fly, I need to be able to know how to modify that in order to change the outcome time on the fly because when you work in movies, they are always changing your time requirement. It could be exactly 20 minutes. 
and they'll come in and say, well, we really need him in 10. So you have to figure out how to alter that on the fly as you go. Figure out what's the most important thing that you're going to be doing and figure out how to continue to warm up, work out, and cool down within the parameters that you're given. It's actually pretty fun from a design perspective anyway. Think about this, shield cast, we have kettlebell halos, alternating halos, halos to squats. Shield cast, gamma cast, two-handed, single-handed, double-handed. For mace, 360, alternating 360, 360 to prayer transition. There are a lot of versions of shield cast that you can put into this warm-up every day. The same thing is true of shoulder and neck mobility. I can think of 14 off the top of my head, but think about all your neck drills that you have side to side, lateral glides forward and back. There are different versions of that, and you could do either two exercises in here for 30 seconds each one, or just pick one and do it. Spinal rock. Spinal rock, spinal rock, shin box, spinal rock, spinal extension, spinal rock, hip extension, rolling like a ball, kneeling, same side shoulder roll, kneeling, opposite side shoulder roll. You can go through all these versions and work on them a little bit every day as part of the key up for your brain. And then the hip shin box series, which we already detailed. These are fairly simple things for you to start assembling your own warmups with. Go back through all the videos on all these topics and watch them. Make lists for yourself. If I tell you everything, you might not learn anything. If you write it down for yourself, then you will understand it and you can start to make lists. Take the first one, take Mace 360, and then add other categories across. And you can make easily 100 versions of this warm up very simply, very quickly. We have this in this eight minute format instead of 10 minutes because usually I want a two minute transition to then transition to the next format of training. People usually need two minutes to stand up, walk over, find the equipment that they need, come back and listen to instruction in that time. If you have more time, then go ahead and add categories to this. If I've been injured or one of my clients is injured, then we will expand this from four categories down to all the way up to 10 categories and turn our warm up into 20 minutes of warm up. That warm up really becomes therapy at that point, where we would then put in two versions of a shield cast, we would put in two versions of spinal rock, put in usually put in more three or four versions of shoulder or neck mobility, because that's usually where the majority of injuries come from in my business because of rapid direction change in fight scenes or ratchet pulls or something like that. And hip shin box can always be expanded. Everybody tends to suck at hip mobility and shin box mobility because our culture, we sit down a lot. We sit down on the plane, we sit down on trains, we sit down in automobiles. Doesn't matter where you are in the Western world, you tend to sit at about the same height, which has a very predictable effect on our hips. This one is very important. I consider these to be the most important four categories for warm up. You can change that and start putting in different types of ambulatory movements, quadruped walking, and all these other different types of things. And you see that a lot in CrossFit. I tend to work in smaller spaces and not have an entire box. So I try to keep my warm up in like a four by four space because oftentimes you're limited on space. Think about this idea, start writing them down, get down in the comments, write down a bunch of ideas, ask questions on these topics, and we'll talk about it more in the future. This has been Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica. Learn a real skill, figure out how to warm up.